I feel dizzy. I be, I feel dizzy. I try and try and try and try and and finish. I try. I I got it. <laughs> No oh. worries, the teacher is coming. No worries. No, it's okay. Me. It's okay. Hi, teacher. Uh, which Good section evening. was it that made you dizzy, uh, Jancy? <laughs> Why? What made you dizzy? Yes, when I tried to work in a platform. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. What section? What section made that uh, happen? Number two. Yes. Oh, it's a okay. Mirror. And uh, yes. well. I told you that I was going to help you today. <laughs> oh, teacher, so but yeah, I'm I mean... wondering, I, I wondering about that. I don't know. The exercise is so complicated right now. I know. But yes. I yeah. understand what can I do. I know. It's I know. more complicated. Yeah. 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 Because advanced level comes with that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't finish. More I don't finish. The it's all right. Two. It's all right. I'm going to help you right now. I, I am here okay. to help you. And the thing is, that the, the mistakes are the ones that are making it even harder because it's not only um you know the fact that um it is a bit harder topics are just a bit harder but the mistakes that are also present in the platform are what is maybe um getting to you guys and frustrating you but you know here we are we are um ready to to start another um session tonight we are going actually to be covering um both exercises i mean yesterday we talked about section one i think there is not much doubt uh in section one but we're gonna do a quick run through section one and then we're going to go to section two because of course i have noticed i have been noticing that you guys are helping one another which is great uh but i am here also to to guide you you know through through this um situation um well welcome as always Another thing is I just needed to clarify. Yes, indeed. Tomorrow we are having a class. So yeah, oh. it was yo que iba por la pupusa, dijo. You know how it is. You know how it is. It's a Friday, so you guys are allowed to have pupusas in front of your screen. <laughs> so yeah, there is always, you know, the fact that I mean the 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 the, the advantage of asking a pedidos ya now. Now it's not Hugo, it's Pedido Ya, but still, yeah. you can ask for one. Um, so yeah, so tomorrow and next Friday as well, we're going to be having classes. So for those who wanted to celebrate Valentine's a little bit later on the Friday, I'm sorry, guys. Um, that is because we have to, um, to comply with the schedule and the schedule is supposed to, or our course right now is supposed to be ending by the 28th. Therefore, if we count, you know, day by day, we wouldn't make it if we miss um, classes on Friday and well, this Friday and next Friday. Therefore, yeah, we're going to have to be um, to be working on those days. But today, what we're going to do, as I told you, is to um, wrap up section one and section two in terms of exercises, at least, and get very close from wrapping it up as well on topics. Now, before we go to any of that. I was wondering, as per usual, you know, before I get into these classes, I always have these questions in my mind. And tonight, I want to know, what will be, you know, that thing, that gadget, that device that you cannot live without and why? Hmm. So something in your life, something, okay? Not someone, something. What is that thing in your life that you cannot live without? For example, in my case, it's not like I can't live without it, but I don't feel myself when I don't have them um, is my headphones. Okay, it can be headphones or earphones, but either of them, like whenever I go to work, whenever I go anywhere, um, I just feel like, you know, I want to have them. Sometimes I don't even use them. Sometimes I, I am riding the bus and I don't use my headphones. I don't use my earphones. Um, but I like to know that I have them there just in case I feel like like listening to music, like hiding into my own hole. Um, so I, I feel like I need them close by. Um, so that's me. OK, in my case, something that I cannot I don't feel myself without is um, a device for me to listen to music with. OK, so because sometimes it's my speaker. You know, the other day, actually, this is a funny story. The other day I had the chance to go to El Boqueron with my family. Um, and I brought my speaker with me 
And then today, my, I mean, my sister was looking for my for my speaker the other day, and she was like, "Where's your speaker?" And I was like, "I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember where I left it." And it was actually in the bag that I had that day. And then when she found it in my bag, she asked me like, "Why did you take it to a Bocaron?" And I was like, "I don't know, because I had never been, so I didn't know how long the walk was. So if I got bored, you know, I wanted something for us to listen to music. Um, so yeah." I'm that kind of person, you know, the one who likes to be surrounded by something that can get me distracted. So now, how about you guys? What would be that thing, that is specific detail that gets you into um, that mood, you know, something that you need to have around you just so you feel more comfortable? I think we're going to start tonight by hearing from Julia. So tell me, Julia, what would be your device, your um, gadget that makes you feel safer okay uh, good night good evening uh well in my case it's also uh, the headphones yeah because i really like to listen to music and that helps me also to concentrate when i'm working or uh, to have something in mind when i'm walking around or when i'm in the in in the bus also i really like to have a book i i have a lot of books and i really like to have a book with me even though i don't have the time to read it but mm -hmm. i i really like to have a, a book with me i don't know why <laughs> it's okay yeah i can relate i can totally relate because when i was studying when i was in the uh, uh, still in the university I remember that I will always carry a pamphlet with me. You know, do you, you guys know what is a pamphlet? Like photocopies? Um, yeah. So yeah, maybe there were old pamphlets, maybe from my first year, but pamphlet. I will always carry pamphlets on, on, my, um, on my backpack. Just so I could, you know, because sometimes I saw some students on the way to the university, riding the bus as well, and I saw them studying. So I felt like I had to pretend that I was studying something, you know, sometimes I just felt like that. I just felt like, okay, people are going to think that, I don't know, maybe I'm a criminal or something. So let me get my pamphlet. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that was basically the reason why. All right. Um, how about um, Joaquin? How about you, Joaquin? What is that? device that is specific gadget that you cannot live without it can be anything it can be a pen a notebook anything oh i think you are still mute uh, sorry yeah y joaquin ya contó toda la historia y, y sin quitarse el mudo <laughs> my god <laughs> okay. um, I don't know what is the question, teacher. Um, repeat, please. Something in your life, something in, I'm talking about a thing, not a person, not uh, a pet, that you cannot live without. You know, something that makes you feel uh, like safer. Whenever you go outside, whenever you go to work, whenever you go on vacations, anything, but something that you cannot forget. What would be that thing? <laughs> okay. Um... In my case, I remember that I that I have a trip in 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 twenty twenty thirteen. I I I, I traveled uh, to USA uh, for for uh, for for the work, for mm -hmm. my work. And I forget my, my, my cell phone. I, I, I was uh, communicating with my family with one, with, with the messenger in my computer. Ooh. Yes. Okay. So yeah, your cell phone then. So it, See, yeah, yes. nowadays I think cell phones are, a very um, important piece of technology. Yes. And many people, they actually cannot get through a day without using or looking at their phones. In my case, I'm not like that. I think I have told you this story before, but I don't like using my cell phone that much. 
And that is also the reason why sometimes, you know, I might be replying to your text, but then all of a sudden I'm just gone. I just ghost you. Uh, and that's why, because I don't like to, to use my phone that much. Um, but yeah, a phone will be something very important yes. to forget. Yes. All right. Um, how about... Yes, yes. <laughs> For me, important to go with, with them is money. <laughs> Money is essential for me because yeah. when, <laughs> because when when I see a something or the promotion, I don't know, it probably I don't have more chain, another chain, mm -hmm. and and I buy it, I buy it. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so yeah, money that is important. In my okay, in my case nowadays, you know, I don't know. Maybe you guys are gonna think that um, it's a bad practice. I myself think it's a bad practice. Sometimes I don't like cash. Like I don't like to carry a lot of cash with me. Um, what I normally do is that uh, I make transfers. Like whenever I I have one of those occasions that Jancy is mentioning, like I see something that is a, a great deal and I'm like, I have to get that because that's more expensive than it is right now. Um, what I do is I do transfers. I have my debit card. And so I transfer money to my to my debit card so I can, I can buy the things that I want. Um, so yeah, but the problem is that sometimes, you know, when you are, I don't know, shopping or do running errands or things like that. For the um, bus, you need cash. Yes. Yeah, you, you forget that you're spending and then you get to a point where you're like, uh, I don't have enough a, a penny for my for my bus ride. <laughs> so yeah, it has happened to me. It has happened a couple of times because I don't like um, to carry cash with me. Uh, so now I got used to having $5 hidden in my in my wallet. Because that's gonna help me, you know. Whenever I get to that, okay. to that yeah. Because yes. uh, now my, I know. <laughs> yeah, my five emergency dollars. So yeah, <laughs> keep that in mind. Okay. Um. Let's hear maybe from Jacqueline. How about you, Jacqueline? What will be one device, one gadget in your life that you cannot live without? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Uh, I think, teacher, the my phone because. I use a lot for my business to um, orders and more things and uh, and then I think I I can live without my phone. All right. So your life would not be the same if you didn't have a no. phone. Hmm. Yes, teacher. Okay, and also for the TikToks, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is a real thing. <laughs> Okay, um, how about um, Walter? How about you, Walter? What would be that thing that you cannot live without? Um, in my case, I think it's uh, my cell phone because uh, all my life I handle through my cell phone. For example, uh, I use a, a cell phone for paying some loans, mm -hmm. uh, pay my credit cards mm -hmm. and another things, even though I hate, I hate to do a long line at the banks. Mm -hmm. I think when you use uh, online services, you avoid that that situation. Yes, it's a good that. A lot. Yes. Even you though uh, you try to communicate with someone, it's too easy with the so cell phone. Uh, yeah, use right. your social media, yeah, TikTok, Facebook, <laughs> and, and others, and others, even. Uh, I think a uh, cell phone for me substitute, mm -hmm. for example, a smart TV because I am fan for uh, a lot of stream like uh, like uh, Netflix, like uh, HBO Max, mm -hmm. uh, Prime Video, and when I feel tired and I need to relax, only turn on my cell phone and watch some movie or series in English, even though to learn another language for yeah. me is is necessary. Okay. I never, I never uh, uh, forget that. I forget my wife, but never my cell phone. I forget my wife, but I never forget my phone. That was the line of the night. Well, that's, that's you. I didn't say that. That's you. Yeah, phones are very important, but you know, me personally, I know I'm young and I know I'm a young person, but I think that in my case, I am 
tired of having a phone sometimes. Like, I feel like the phone um, only brings me, I mean, some sort of distraction in my life, at least. I just feel like it, it, get, it gets me but distracted. Um, the main thing that I use my phone for, and if you have a look at my phone, it will be Spotify. That's the thing that I do the most, you know, like listen to music. Um, also TikTok, I'm not going to lie. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not the kind of You don't person, like TikTok. I'm not the kind of person who likes to like um, call others or text uh, others through the phone. I do it maybe for business. Like, you know, I, I have one person here who I work with. But sometimes when I need to talk to him, I'd rather go to his house because he lives like, what, half a block away. So I'd rather yeah. go to his house instead of calling him. If I want to talk to my girlfriend, I'd rather go to her house. She lives like four <laughs> blocks away because I don't like uh, communication through the phone. I don't know. It's just something like weird about me. You know, my family, sometimes they call me and they're like, are you okay? Like, did we say anything <laughs> wrong last time we talked? And I'm like, no, that's just me. That's just me. I, I'm not a phone guy. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, they are important because they help you communicate. Uh, even my dad, he gets angry with me when I don't answer my phone. <laughs> so, hey, TK, you know. I spend I spend hours, uh, not a phone. day, but one hour when I watch some videos on TikTok. I don't know. It's an addicti addictive. It is, addictive. Yeah, yeah. it is addictive. Yeah, it is addictive. It is addictive. It is. Yes, very, very much. But okay, so uh, for the rest, guys, thank you for thinking about what you were going to say. Um, but we have to move on. We have to um, to work on the platform today because it is important for us to make sure, you know, on what we're working, on what we're doing. Um, so yeah, we're going to do this right now. I told you for the first section, we're only going to do a quick check. If you have any of these... Um, exercise is wrong you can go ahead and you know take the right answer no problem with that and then we're going to move on to section number two so the first um exercise or the first uh, knowledge checks that we have in this occasion is going to be about well the instruction is relatively simple read the dialogues and complete the sentences if two answers are possible write both of them and separate both by using a hash um sorry a slash Remember to use either gerund or infinitive or both if possible. So when you have this right here, if two answers are possible, it means that if you can use um, the infinitive or the gerund, I recommend that you guys go only for one, okay? Just one. Don't try to complicate your life with uh, going for both options. Now, here we have an example. Periods are already placed for you. So don't worry about periods either. So we have the first, uh, for example, Ada. Sam isn't happy um, when he has nothing to do. And then Gary says, I know, I re it really bothers him. So uh, here we have the options. Sam can't stand, and then we can go for having nothing to do, or to have nothing to do, or having nothing to do, to, uh, to have nothing to do. So, of course, we're going to place the um, a slash right there. Uh, but yeah, so this is the way we should go. Either of these three options are going to be um, the proper ones. So in my case, the ones that I have selected are going to be this. So we have the same example. Um, <clears throat> Sam isn't happy when he has nothing to do. Y aquí me doy cuenta del por qué, o sea, ustedes no habían pedido la primera de este. Me fijé que anoche era como que, ¿por qué nadie pide la primera? Porque los demás sí tienen problema y la primera no. Pero bueno, so, Sam isn't happy when uh, he has nothing to do. And Gary says, I know, it really bothers him. And then the answer is, Sam can stand having nothing to do. All right, so that's the one thing. I will always recommend you to go for the gerund option, okay? Just so you start sounding more um, familiar, you know, more nat natural, more native-like. I will always recommend you to go for the gerund option. If you feel more comfortable with the infinitive option, do it, no problem. But the gerund is always going to be my advice, at least to you guys. All right, the next one. We have Bic and June. Um, yes, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, okay. in the new with the platform. 
and I don't have that screen. I mean, where I should go? Um, are you like in the course advanced one? Yes, I had the first screen, that one. This one right and here. And then I got the section one. Yeah. And then, then I got on that friends. one. Yeah, friends and family. Uh huh. But I am not able to see that exactly screen that you were okay one watching sec. before. Yeah, it's okay. Let's give it a second because it takes a while to load sometimes. Sabes que me equivoqué en hacer eso. Mejor le hubiera dado los los detalles porque no sé. I don't know if it, it has been the same for you guys, but for me at least the platform has been very very lazy lately. Like um since I since I started these courses, it has been very lazy. Like it takes up to two minutes sometimes to load. It's not my it's internet. Mr. Uh huh. Sorry for interrupting you, but it's okay. I have a problem with that because in the first uh, sentence, mm -hmm. I have it answer that I put in there, having nothing to do, but it's a big room. I don't know what's going on. Did you add a period or something like that? Because that may be. If you uh, play yeah, I add, period. I, I add a period. Okay, maybe so maybe, that's the yeah, that's the reason why, probably. It is very possible. Okay, so coming back to you, Catherine. Uh, so when you log into section one, this is possibly the first um, page that you're going to see, the lesson objective. Then, of course, you can follow up and uh, get into the videos. These are the ones, of course, where the topic is developed, where I get the information that I share with you guys. And then the third um, thing that we have available here is going to be the knowledge checks. All the time, we're going to have them after one or two sections or two of the videos. Um, so in these knowledge checks, all we have to do is follow the instructions that are given. Now, the only complication now or at this point for you guys is the fact that um, you are in an advanced level. Therefore, there are no Spanish um, explanations. And that makes it a little bit harder, right? Because before, when we were in intermediate and all that, um, we had the option of reading the instructions in Spanish. And of course, sometimes it is easier because we're not completely familiar with the language. Therefore, some sentences, some uh, instructions might be a little bit tricky. But I would like to know, um, Catherine, were you able to get to here? Yes. yes. Um, I have another question. Yes. Um, how do I know that I have everything done? Like it should show me something like I'm complete. Yeah, these because I go, marks. I went through all the sections. Mm -hmm. However, I think I skipped some of them, so I am not really sure if I have everything done. Yeah, it's only gonna show you that you are completely done once. Well, the lesson objectives sometimes are also a little bit toxic because you can spend hours in in this same page right here. And it's never going to show uh, that it's complete. So don't worry about this ones. But the ones you have to worry about are going to be the, the sections or the videos. You have to watch, watch it all the way to the end. Like you have to wait until the last second. And once you uh, move forward, of course, you're going to have this green check right here. And that means you're done with that section. And then the oh. same is going to happen with the knowledge check. Once you have completed all of the, of the information, even if you have some answers wrong and uh, but if you have answered you ha if you have typed something in if you have selected something it's going to tell you that you have completed the section you know um so yeah the only thing that's going to help you know that you're done is going to be this um green check on top okay and um uh, the sections are developed by week i mean that that means the section one is for this week and it is supposed to be like on. that. It is supposed to be like that. Oh. However, um, they send you a schedule. And in my case, it is something that I apologize with you guys sometimes because I know that some other teachers, maybe they rush it and they um, develop the, the platform as the main thing. In my case, I'd rather have some time for you to practice and we go in a, a slower pace. I don't like to rush it too much. Therefore, sometimes we are covering the topics um, a little bit behind. So the topics or, I mean, um, people from Corporativo are going to expect you to be done with section two. Uh, and we are maybe still in the middle of section two. We haven't really finished section two. 
Um, but that's why I always advise you guys that when you're working, you can let me know, you know, like if uh, you're struggling with something, just let me know and I'll be able, I'll be more than willing to help you because yeah, we um, in the class are going to be a little bit behind. Sometimes we are behind in other times, maybe we might be ahead, but I don't like to go ahead because if we do that, or if I do that, when we get to the last week, we're going to have the whole week off. And uh, that is also not allowed. Therefore, that's why sometimes you're going to feel like the pace is a little bit slow. But it's because I want to provide you guys with a space to um, to practice and, you know, to not feel like it's all rushed up. Okay, very good, Sandra. Very nice. Oh, and yeah, just to finish, to wrap up your um, your question, Catherine. So for this week, you are supposed to be done with section one and section two, at least with the, um, the activities. Then for next week, you will be expected to be done with the midterm, I think, because here we only have four sections. And then for uh, week number three, you will have to be done with sections three and four. And when you when we get to, um, to the last week, you're only expected to be done with the final test. So that will be the order or the general order or uh, these modules. Sometimes we have modules that are compound by five different sections, and those are easier to deal with because, yeah, we have section one and two on the first week, section three and four, uh, and section, sorry, section three and the midterm on the second week, section four and five on the third, and then the final test on the last week. Um, but yeah, this time around, the, my advice is gonna be just go ahead, you know, work as much as you can. If you're done by next week, that's all right. Um, you can work as ahead as you want, and that's never going to be a problem. I think Jancy is even done yet. Jancy, ya terminó usted o todavía no? Sí, va? Number, the section three. Okay. Only. So, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, I noticed but that. I have a problem with, with, um, in, a, in some words, but no We're going to get there. Yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Ok, pero sí, o sea, entonces, Catherine y los demás, ¿verdad? Si anteriormente los demás no habían estado en cursos como este, ustedes pueden trabajar tan adelante como gusten. O sea, nunca se les va a recriminar que hagan eso. Entonces, eh, el objetivo principal es, pues, culminar con la, con la plataforma, ¿verdad? Y por eso yo les digo, ya el resto, lo de las clases, o sea, como que en mis clases se desarrolla... Un poco aparte, si la plataforma ustedes pueden ir adelante, no va a ser problema eso, pero los temas pueda que vengan un poco más lento, ¿verdad? Detrás, para que la explicación no sea tan acelerada y las actividades tampoco sean tan, tan aceleradas, um, como he visto yo, perdón, que es en otros casos. So, yeah, so that will be it. Ok, okay so, thank you. no problem, it's a pleasure. Ok, so now that um, that is cleared, we have here... We were saying having nothing to do as Drubal. Did it work without the period? Yeah, actually it's worked, but I have a problem with the with another one. With okay. visiting his parent, the number uh, visiting his, four, I think it is. Her parents? Oh, number her, three. Number three. Okay, so it will be visiting her parents on the weekend. Visiting his her, or her? Her. Her. Yeah, because uh, it's Leslie. Mistake. Yeah. I know Leslie is a tricky name also because it is used in Asia. It is used for for males. So That's yeah, it's, it's a tricky make one. A mistake, yeah. yeah, so it's her mm -hmm. parents. Okay, so number two will, is going to be going to parties, going to school parties or going to parties. You can go with either or, okay? So you can pick going to school parties or going to parties. Uh, in this case, the, the conversation is going to be between Vic and June, as I was saying. I hardly ever go to school parties anymore. Me neither. They are not as fun, as much fun uh, as they used to be. Esta es otra cosa, miren. Este, esto de el used to be, hoy en día este be casi no se usa. O sea, en las conversaciones así, uh, regulares, este be suena extraño. Sí, por eso fue que me, me pareció extraño que estaba ahí. So the, it would be, they are not as much fun as they used to. Sí. O sea, en la actualidad, ¿verdad? Si vamos a hablar de forma correcta, siguiendo todos los pasos gramaticales, claro, el B es necesario, pero eh, en una conversación así coloquial suena mucho, mucho más natural que digamos, they're not as much fun as they used to. 
Sí, ne no necesariamente utilizando el be eh, al final. Okay, number three, we have Tina and Leslie. Um, you visit your parents on the weekends, don't you? And Leslie answers, yes, I spend Sundays with them. I'm not too busy uh, the rest of the week. Oh, sorry, I'm too busy. I'm too busy the rest of the week. So here we have that Leslie prefers visiting her parents on the weekend. Ahora, aquí está lo que les decía, que si se iban por la opción de el uh, infinitivo, sería to visit, ¿sí? To visit her parents. Y este es el error que está en la plataforma. Aquí ustedes tendrían que haber colocado off the weekend. Sí, to visit her parents off the weekend. No on the weekend, sino off the weekend. Sí, de, uy, y tampoco lo agarro así. Bueno, pero al menos en la información que, que me parecía a mí anteriormente, Sí, se, sí funcionaba, entonces si era to visit the parents off the weekend. Entonces ese era un error, ¿verdad? Que, que estaba eh, acá, vamos a ver si así lo toma. No, de ninguna de las dos formas. Bueno, lo vamos a cambiar a como estaba antes. Pero por eso les dije, en este caso es mejor irnos por esta ruta, ¿verdad? El gerundio y decir visiting her parents on the weekend. Sí, visiting her parents on the weekend. Another reminder, don't place an S at the end of this word. It's a singular word and we're going to say weekend, okay? Because it is um, a common practice. It's like a, like a, um, a routine that she has. And when we talk about routines, we don't need to go with um, plural forms. So it, we're going to say visiting her parents on the weekend only. Now, number four, Tom and Ivy. Um, are you going to take a, an Italiana? I'm sorry an Italina class um, this summer. And she says, yes, I am. I love to learn new languages. Okay, and then we have the answer is, Ivy is into learning new languages. That is her passion. That is what she likes. Um, therefore, she's going to be taking, you know, Italina classes. Now, we have Ang and Sue. These two people are talking about, well, um something that they're gonna do in the weekend and the question is do you want to go rock climbing with me this weekend and sue answers i don't know rock, rock climbing sounds dangerous so we have sue is worried about going rock climbing okay going rock climbing now if you want to go to the um to the infinity form you can go with to go Rock, come on, dude. <laughs> Solo porque ya puse eso se me toxiqueó esta cosa. Entonces vamos a dejarlo así como estaba mejor. Así no, no cometemos errores. So going rock climbing. Sue is worried about going rock climbing. Now, uh, on number six, it is Josh and Celia. So the question that Josh is going to ask is the following. What sort of volunteer work do you, do you do for the library, Celia? And she replies, I love kids, so I volunteer... Um, as a children's storyteller on Saturdays. And so we have, Celia enjoys volunteering as a children's story storyteller. Children's storyteller. Importante colocar el apóstrofe. Sí, children's, porque este va a ser en plural. Entonces sería children's storyteller. Uh, importantísimo, que no se nos olvide, ¿sí? Que este, en este caso decimos children's no porque es plural, sino que ya el, no, el noun children, ¿verdad? Es la pluralización de child. Entonces, uh, es simplemente porque estamos utilizando el posesivo, ¿sí? O sea, que es un um, cuenta cuentos, ¿sí? De niños. Así que por eso es que decimos children's storyteller. Antes que se nos vaya a olvidar y que luego digamos, ah, en una clase yo aprendí que se le pone ese al final. No, no necesariamente. Eso es porque estamos hablando de un um, posesivo. Ok, now this one. I forgot to share audio with you guys. Therefore, we're not going to be sharing the audio. And as I said, it's going to be a quick uh, review. So, um, We're only going to read this, okay? We're not going to listen to the audio because, I, I, as I mentioned, I forgot to share audio from my computer. Um, so it's going to be uh, the first one, the one who stay out late uh, at a big party. It will be Heather. The one who is stay home uh, and watch TV will be Marcos. The one who helps a relative with a personal problem will also be Marcos. And the one who invite a classmate to a funny movie will be Heather, okay? So that's the way you have to go with this um, section over here. 
Now we go to 1.8. 1 1.8. 1 .8. What is the instruction? The instruction we have is read the following sentences, then combine them to make one single sentence. Remember to use capital letters to begin um, to the, at the beginning of your sentence and a period at the end. So this is going to be a little bit longer. We have two different sentences, and what we have to do is create a Frankenstein of those two sentences. This is a tricky activity, and I, um, I am very proud of the ones who have completed it on your own because it is a very, very tricky activity. This was something that I was um, going to actually help you out with, um, but I am very, very glad that you guys made it. So we have uh, five different sentences, or well, in the end, it's going to be 10 sentences, but we have to create five of them. Um, so we have the first ones, and they are, I'm the youngest in the family. The nice thing is I get a lot of attention. Now, the final sentence has to be something like, the nice thing about being the youngest in the family is that I get a lot of attention. So what we're doing is basically is scrambling the sentences. Okay, so just um, eliminating the period in the middle. And something that happens a lot with, uh, with this kind of like creation or recreation of sentences is that this over here, this one over here is going to be seen as um, a dependent clause. Okay, so this one is going to be basically seen as a dependent clause. And this one, is going to be an independent class. Because, for example, if you read, I have a younger sister, you have a clear idea of what the sentence is about. Okay, so by, just by reading that, you know that this person is telling you that they have a younger sister. That means that this sentence is independent. It can stand on its own and have meaning. But if you hear, um, the trouble is she always wants to borrow my clothes, that is something that has no sense. If you don't have the first um, piece of sentence, it's not going to make any sense. Therefore, Sir, when you, yes. A question. Ah, yes. I get confused when you try to solve that exercise. Uh, in the answer, I can see, for example, uh, it's necessary to discover a preposition about, with, of. Mm -hmm. The answer could be, for example, the nice thing of being could be. The nice thing of being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can also say it like that. The nice thing of being the youngest uh -huh. of the family is that you have uh, that I get a lot of attention. But the tricky is the preposition about and that exercise, even though. Yes, that is the only problem, as I told you. Yeah. The only yeah. issue here is going to be that because, well, the uh, the platform is going to recognize only about. Yeah. Even if, <laughs> if using of being makes sense, the platform is set to recognize only about because about in, is the most. But, but in the instruction, I never say, hey, you discover a prepositions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so maybe adding that to the instruction will be a good idea, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe letting people know, like, uh, be careful. Or you may use prepositions and, and, and maybe um, place, you know, between brackets what prepositions you can use. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. that will be a good addition so you guys don't, uh, don't get headaches with these uh, exercises. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that will be very understandable. Okay, so moving on. As I was telling you, we have these two different sentences. And what we do is that we put them together so that we can create one single sentence and one that makes sense completely. Therefore, you see here that uh, this section, yeah, the trouble is taken from the second sentence. Now, uh, well, well uh, here we use the preposition that you were just mentioning. In this case, it's gonna be with, the trouble with, and then we change um, this verb, which is gonna be taken from the first and the main sentence, which is, I have a younger sister, uh, and we switch it into a gerund and say the trouble with yeah. having a younger sister. Now we start, um, well, using, you know, the full on sentence from the first section. And then you complete the rest of the sentence by placing basically the information that, what, that was left from the dependent class. 
So that's how you form this Frankenstein. As I was saying, it's a Frankenstein. You have two sentences and you have to put them together. So here we have another example. The bad part. Okay, so that's taken from the second, the same as this one. So the bad part, that will be the noun class. You know, that's the, the noun class to the full on sentence. Now here, the preposition is off. The, the, uh, so that would be the proper position to use. The bad part of being, and then uh, here, you're going to take the verb from, from this one. Ahora, ahí es donde se pone complicado, porque en este caso el verbo está conjugado con la primera persona, entonces dice am, ¿verdad? Pero como aquí no voy a poder, a poder decir the bad part of am, sino que aquí el verbo, tengo que usar este verbo, pero conjugado en su forma del gerundio. ¿Cuál es la forma del gerundio del verbo be? Sería being. So it will be the bad part of being away, or uh, away at college, or only away. Oh, cierto, esa es otra, otra cosa complicada con estas oraciones, que en ocasiones hay palabras que ya no son necesarias, ¿sí? O sea, porque el objetivo es simplemente explicar, ¿verdad?, eh, lo que sucede. Entonces, por ejemplo, el lugar donde ustedes se van, a veces ya no es necesario explicarlo. Si es eso lo que se está tratando de decir, ese lugar no tiene sentido. Ahora, ¿eso puede llegar a ser redundante? ¿Lo podemos decir? Sí lo podemos decir. Pero regresamos otra vez al mismo punto de inicio, ¿sí? La plataforma no está... Eh, designada, ¿verdad? A aceptar eso porque la forma más apropiada es eliminar ese lugar porque eso no tiene sentido necesariamente ya cuando la oración está completa, o sea, cuando decimos toda la idea, es mejor solo decir, the bad thing about being away is that I miss my family so the bad part of the bad uh, thing of being away is that I miss my family, it doesn't matter where you are away, the only thing that matters is that uh, you are away ok Next one, eso suena raro. Si pensamos en español, you are away. Okay, now, um, the worst thing, the worst thing, and then the preposition, about, and then working. Of course, here we're going to have um, to, to place this verb in its gerund form. So it will be the worst thing about working at night. And we also, once again, use the full sentence here. And we go to, is that I can't, um have dinner with my family okay so in this case we didn't have to dispose any words sí o sea en este caso no tuvimos verdad que deshacernos de ninguna palabra usamos absolutamente todas la diferencia siempre es el agregar esta preposición que pues aquí sería about sí sería la más apropiada para utilizar um una vez más para retomar el tema que mencionaba Walter sí podría decir yo por ejemplo the worst thing of sí the worst thing of working at night o sea, y podría eh, funcionar. Ahora, el ¿por qué no necesariamente se utilizaría of como la primera opción? Porque lo que yo estoy haciendo es una descripción, ¿verdad? Acerca de algo, ¿sí? No es algo que necesariamente le pertenece a. O sea, diferente sería, por ejemplo, si yo digo the worst thing of... Uh, um, bueno, no, también sería about. Um, por ejemplo, si yo fuese a decir the worst thing of being your friend, ¿sí? The worst thing of being your friend, o sea, es algo como que está ahí en medio, ¿verdad? Entre nosotros y como que nos pertenece a nosotros. Entonces, por eso podría ser mejor opción utilizar of. Pero incluso, si ustedes utilizan about, va a sonar mucho mejor. Sí, o sea, por eso es que siempre, también en este caso, la recomendación va a ser, um, en la medida de lo posible, irnos más por el about que por el of, cuando se pueda eh, reemplazar, ¿verdad? Esa preposición. Ok, and the last one. One bad thing about, here we have the about once again, y otra vez lo que les decía, ¿verdad? El verbo, o sea, en, en la primera oración, en la oración independiente, es am, así que por eso no podemos decir, ¿verdad? Um, one bad thing about am, sino que tiene que ser el verbo be conjugado en su forma participia, y en ese caso es being. So, one thing, uh, one bad thing about being the oldest in the family, and once again, here we don't, Uh, this subtract any of uh, of the words of being the oldest in the family. So you have it all the way to there. And then we start, is that I always um, have to babysit? Okay, is that I always have to babysit? So, did you get it? Creo que sí, ¿verdad? Creo que ya las teníamos. Así que, bueno, I, um, let's move on. Let's go to the next one. This one is easier because it is actually already selected. I'm only going to read 
uh, the answers to you guys. It's gonna be what were they what were they celebrating? They were celebrating Victor's grandmother um 80th birthday. Aquí hay otra cosa. Esto se me hizo bastante incómodo porque, o sea, no sé, ¿verdad? Eso queda depende de las escuelas. Pero en mi caso, yo he escuchado, o pues como lo había aprendido, es que aquí debería ser Victor's grands, grandmothers. Sí. O sea, que es el cumpleaños de la abuela de Victor. Entonces falta un posesivo, según lo que, lo que yo conozco, debería ser, ¿verdad? They were celebrating Victor's grandmothers 80 birthday. Sí. O sea, porque aquí suena como un poco desligado de la abuela, como si, o sea, solamente dice la abuela de Víctor, eh, 80 cumpleaños. En mi interpretación, así suena, ¿ok? No estoy diciendo que esté mal, solo como les digo, es algo que en lo personal yo agregaría la otra, eh, la otra posesión después de grandmother, sería grandmothers, así como está acá. ¿eh? Sí, they were celebrating Víctor's grandmother's birthday. Sí, o sea, esa es la forma en la que, en la que yo reconocería mejor esa, esa eh, oración. Pero igual, como les digo, eso puede depender a veces de la escuela o del lugar en el cual se, se llega a aprender. Ok, next one up. The next question is, how many people were there about? And we simply say 80, ok? So we don't go for anything more um, crazy, just 80. We don't go, for example, to lots, several, nothing. Just 80, that's it. Which places does he mention people came from? We have that he mentions in the audio, Texas, Chicago, Florida, California, and Mexico. Those will be the proper ones. Please do not select the one that says New Mexico here, this one, because it is a mistake. It will be just Mexico. Um, number four, who is the first relative he mentions was uh, at the reunion? And it will be his uncle's cousin. His uncle's cousin. O sea, ¿qué significaría eso en español? His uncle's cousin. Hmm. ¿Qué sería? His uncle's cousin. El primo de su tío. Mm -hmm. El primo de su tío. Muy bien. His uncle's cousin. El primo de su tío. Okay, now, who else besides relatives were at the reunion? And it will be friends of the family. Friends of the family. So that's it for this one. Uh, then the last exercise of section one is going to be about full house. I, I will assume that you guys have done the reading uh, as per usual. I'll, I'll tell you that reading is very important. I know that this one is going to be hard because it is very difficult to see. Um, and yeah, it took me a while because you have to zoom it very close. But still, you know, uh, the reading is here so we can basically see it like that. Okay, it's going to be hard, but you can see it. Okay. Um, the, answer, the questions are going to be, what reason does Annie Bell give for adopting so many children? And the proper answer, after watching the musical Oliver. Okay, after watching the musical Oliver. Now, what's special about the children that Bell's uh, and her husband adopt? They have a special needs. That will be the um, proper answer. They have a special needs. Yeah. And the last one, what are the total monthly expenses for the family? And over $27,000 a month. Over $27,000 a month. Now, just imagine that. Imagínense tener una familia que gaste tanto. Hmm. That will be very, very complicated. $27,000 um, a month. I don't know about the bells, but... That is a lot of expending. Okay, now section two. Esta es toda fácil, ¿verdad? Creo que esta no le costó, Yancy. <laughs> so section two. Uh, we have here instructions. Choose the answers which best describe what these sentences mean. The first one is, I shouldn't have invited them. I shouldn't have invited them. Esto es acerca del tema que estaba supuesto a cubrir esta noche. Sí, que es, serían los verbos modales en pasado. O sea, ¿cuáles son las formas, verdad, de utilizar eh, los modales en pasado? Tenemos entonces, I shouldn't have invited, invited them. ¿Qué significa I invited them? Sí, o sea, es como que eh, me arrepiento de haberlo hecho, pero lo hice. Mm -hmm. Then we have, that was a secret. You weren't supposed to tell anyone. That means that you told someone. You told someone. Entonces, um, si tenemos aquí algo negativo, it means that the person actually did the opposite, did something positive. Positive in the sense of grammar, but 
not positive in the sense of uh, pragmatics. All right, next one. We have, we didn't have to study for the test. We didn't have to study for the test. It means that we were prepared for the test. We didn't need to study because we were ready. So that will be the way you will have to understand that sentence. And the last one. I know Jane didn't like my cooking, but she didn't need to be so rude about it. It means that Jane, uh, sorry, Jane was um, rude to me. Jane was rude to me. So that will be the answer in this case over here. So Jane was rude to the person who cooked. Uh, whenever you don't like something, please don't tell them. Just be honest and, and or not honest, but be nice with the people who are cooking, okay? Now, esta era la que, la que tuve que reportar. Esta sí ya la reporté porque tiene varios, varios errores desde en, el, en el aggravate, en el avoid. Eh, había ahí problemas, ¿verdad? Entonces, esta es una que les voy a dar, como dicen los profes cuando se equivocan en el examen, ¿verdad? Para que pasen. Sí, o sea, se las se se doy porque pues esta está mala, mala, mala. Ok, tenemos entonces. Uh, read the following sentences. Notice the words or phrases which are in brackets. Replace them um, using the following verbs. Aggravate, avoid, cause, deal with, identify, ignore, run into, and solve. So we have, eh, entre paréntesis tenemos, ¿verdad? ¿Cuál es como la interpretación de lo que la persona hace? Y luego nosotros tenemos que reconocer cuál es el verbo que describe mejor esta acción, ¿verdad? Esta acción que está entre paréntesis. Así que vamos a ver. The first one. My friend never does anything about. It means that you ignore that. So my friend ignores his problems. Now, for my taste, I think uh, always will be great. My friend always ignores his problems. But it works like this. It works. Number two. Maria can look at a broken bicycle and find... Uh, the problem right away. We say that find is easily replaced by identify because when you find a problem with something, it means that you're identifying that issue. Okay, next one up. My sister is never afraid to try to take care of, try to take care of a difficult problem. So when you try to take care of something, it means that you are dealing with that. So the proper answer will be deal with. My sister is never afraid of Um, oh yeah, eso es lo, la otra cosa que les decía que aquí tenía que ser dealing with ¿sí? dealing with o sea, tenía que ser eh, conjugado ¿verdad? en su forma del gerundio my sister is never afraid to dealing with a, different, uh, a difficult um, problem ok y eso Porque, por la preposición tú, teacher eh, ese es el detalle, eso, justo eso les iba a decir el caso es que mm. aquí, esto el afraid to es una sola Um, como una sola palabra, ¿sí? Afraid to. Entonces, eh, sería mejor, ¿verdad? Que se diga afraid to dealing with, ¿sí? Entonces, es, es ¿cómo decirlo? Oh, como en matemáticas, cuando tenemos fórmulas, el afraid to es como una, una parte sola, ¿verdad? De, de la... Model. ¿Hola? Like a frozen model. Uh -huh. Yes, there we go. Entonces, it would be way better if we say afraid to dealing with. All right, uh, number four. Jill Dong always makes uh, his problems worse. In this case, as I said yesterday, the best way to go about it will be to say aggravates because we were talking about a third person and the fact that we have um, this preposition over here is not going to change anything, okay? Just because we are, oh, sorry, adverb, adverb. Just because we have this adverb of time right here, It is not going to change the fact that the verb has to be in its third person form, which will have to be aggravates. So Jill Dong always aggravates his problems worst. Um, all right. Y ahora, de hecho, esto sería bastante redundante, la utilización de esta palabra en esta oración. Sí, en esta oración es que sería muy redundante porque, pues, bueno, Uh, an aggravation of his problems, uh, or, sorry, the fact that he is using worst at the end will be very weird uh, because using aggravate and worst is basically like using um, synonyms, you know, in the same sentence because makes will be much, much better. Okay, next one is Ruby. Ruby always follows the recipe closely to prevent 
um, but it has to be re uh, replaced to prevent problems when she cooks. And it will be to avoid, okay, to avoid. Now, the reason why is because here we have a preposition right before it. So there is no need for us to use uh, the third person anymore. And it basically follows the same idea as the past. You know, when you talk about um, the past of any, any question and you have used was or did or were in any section of that question, from that point on, you can use the present, you know, the, the regular present. So we have here follows after this, any verbs that come after this follows is going to have to be in its base form. Therefore, you don't need to, to add any S or any IAS, anything else. Just the base form of the verb after the first um, verb has already been conjugated into its third person form. Okay, the next one is Ming always unexpectedly, unexpectedly encounters problems when he tries to fix things. So when you unexpectedly encounter something, it means to run into. So Ming always runs into. Sí, aquí sí, ¿verdad? Um, sería necesario. Y ahora me pueden decir, teacher, pero acaba de decir que justo después de, uh, cuando ya hizo la conjugación del primer verbo, no es necesario en los demás. No es necesario en los demás si no hay otro sujeto. ¿Ok? Porque ese es otro detalle, ¿verdad? Si no encontramos otro sujeto. Porque, por ejemplo, aquí al final tenemos el she. Entonces, de aquí sí, ¿verdad? Yo debo decir she cooks. ¿Sí? Porque aquí está otra vez este sujeto. Entonces, de este punto en adelante, vuelve a iniciar lo mismo que anteriormente estaba. La misma regla, ¿verdad? Si decimos she, entonces no vamos a decir she cooks, sino she cooks. Aquí tenemos el he. Entonces, sería he tries. ¿Sí? Entonces, he tries. Um, por eso es que en ocasiones, ¿verdad? Debemos fijarnos bien en este, en este detalle, ¿sí? Um, porque, por ejemplo, si este sujeto fuese un I, digamos que la oración fuese, Ming always runs into problems when I. Entonces, ahí no deberíamos decir tries, sino que sería when I try to fix things. Así que esto de acá, del final, solamente va a depender del sujeto que se utilice, ¿sí? Si este fuese, por ejemplo... Um, qué sé yo, when his friends, sí, entonces ya no debería ser uh, his friends tries, sino his friends try. Entonces, eso es algo bien importante también a tomar en cuenta, ¿verdad? Cuando llegamos a este tipo de oraciones así, que um, tienen este sujeto subordinado que viene justo después um, de, pues, el adverbio acá. Ok, la siguiente. Carla is a great, is great, sorry, at complexity fixing, completely fixing, completely fixing, any kind of problem at work. Completely fixing is going to be seen as solving. So this one is okay. Um, Carla is great at solving any kind of problem at work. That is absolutely okay. And the next sure. one. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Great at is a preposition like a good at. After that, uh, Jerome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great ah, at, okay. basically the same as saying good at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Carla is great at um, solving any kind of uh, problem at work. If you see here, mm -hmm. even the verb that is in, mm -hmm. within the, the, the parenthesis yeah. is um, conjugated on its, on its um, participle form mm -hmm. because this one is not a verb. It is only mm -hmm. an adverb. So... Yeah, this verb is also going to be conjugated on the um, participle form because after this preposition, we're going to go for a gerund. Mm -hmm. All right, next one is Al is the kind of a student who always makes problems for teachers. It will be replaced by causes. All right, so Al is the kind of, uh, of a student who always causes problems for teachers. All right. So that is uh, section 2.5. Now we're going to go to section 2.10. This is another audio. I wanted to play this one because this one is very interesting, but we don't have the time just yet. Um, so I'm only going to show you guys, you know, really quickly what the um, answers are supposed to be. So we have eight possible answers and only um, six questions. That means that we're going to have some of them that are um, left alone. So we have here, 
The heels saw an object uh, flying beside their car. Betty saw creatures looking at them from the object. The creatures spoke to, uh, to the heels in a strange language. Betty found pink powder on her dress the next day. The Air Force agreed that Betty saw a UFO. Uh, the doctor doubted the heels story. The aliens um, looked just like creatures from the TV show. The trip took seven hours instead of four. Como les dije, este audio es muy, muy interesante. Sí, eh, eh, a mí, al menos a mí me pareció bastante interesante. Um, I'm sorry that I don't have the time to, to show it to you, but the answers are going to be this ones. For number one, the hills saw an object flying beside their car. For number two, Betty saw creatures looking at them from the object. For number three, Betty found pink powder on her dress next day. For number four, the doctors doubted the hills story. And for number um, five, it will be the aliens look just like creatures from the TV show or from a TV show. And for number six, we have the trip took seven hours instead of four. Okay, so um, that is it. Eso sería en verdad algunas de las eh, secciones. Esta vez, yo sé que ha sido más complicado. Es, es más difícil, ¿verdad? Eh, la plataforma en este, en este módulo. Pero bueno, vamos a seguir trabajando, vamos a ir poco a poco, make, uh, making progress, getting better, and yeah. So for now, guys, all I have to do is just remember, tomorrow we have a class. So see you here at the same hour, same channel with pupusas and chocolate caliente, hot chocolate. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys very much for your attention and participation. Jan se dice que no, que mejor una coca. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I hope you have an amazing night and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. See you tomorrow. Good night, guys. Bye. -bye.